let us quickly take a look at some of these new cards that they revealed. Now, once again, uh, I do not know what this pack is, but it's got some revivals of classic cards is all I know. I haven't read the cards yet, but I've been told that it's kind of like a revival of some OG cards, which I'm also, I'm, I'm like oh, always down for. I'm always down for this kind of stuff. Um... Because I just think it's cool and flavorful to play like new versions of older cards. Um, Legacy, Legacy of Destruction, next core set. Oh, it is a main set. Okay. So we're starting to get main set reveals for what's to come after for a Phantom Nightmare. So that is cool. Uh, and we got first things first. We got Gandora, a new Gandora, the Dragon of Destruction. Which Gandora, honestly, is one of the one of the coolest anime cards probably if you ask billy break right now he's gonna tell you it's one of his favorite cards for sure that's how cool gandora is um level eight dark dragon effect monster zero attack zero defense and i should be on the right side you are right thank you i forgot uh you can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn if you control gold sarcophagus of light that i don't think is a card that exists yet so that might be a new thing uh, so a remake of Gold Sarcophagus, right? So they're remaking a lot of cards here from like, I believe this is all 2009, 2010-ish era. Uh, anyways, if you control Gold Sarcophagus of Light, you can special summon this card from your hand. Okay. Uh, gains 300 attack for each banished card. So it's like a budget Grand Maju. Uh, you can pay half your life points, destroy as many other cards on the field as possible, and if you do banish them... Then special summon one level 7 or lower monster from your deck that mentions Gold Sarcophagus of Light. And if you do, increase its level by the number of cards destroyed by this effect. Uh, okay, I mean... If this is an entire archetype based around the, the, the Gold Sarcophagus of Light, this is not a terrible card in it, because like it's it would be a free extender and it would be a insane board breaker going second. I mean, imagine resolving this card going second. You're gonna you're gonna blow up your opponent's entire board, banish all of them, and then get another like a teleport from the deck. So it's like not a terrible card right off the bat, but of course on its own it doesn't do anything. We need to check out the other cards. Uh we got Silent Swordsman Zero. Wait, this is all one archetype? What does Gandora have to do with Silent Swordsman? Outside of being printed in the same era. They did they had nothing to do. I mean, they're all Yugi's cards, I suppose. Yeah. So is that ooh, I like that. I like that. Is does that mean they're making an archetype around just Yugi's anime cards? And they're like they belong together now? That is cool. That is gonna be that is gonna that is gonna bait some people into playing their Yugi decks, right? That's like a that's like a dark magician duelist wet dream, right? Um anyways. Level four light warrior. You can only use the third effect of this card's name once per turn. Once per turn during each standby phase, increase this card's level by one. While this card's current level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times five hundred. Okay, both of these effects are irrelevant in 2023. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets Gold Sarcophagus of Light and or a monster that mentions it, you control. You can negate the activation and if you do increase this card's level by one. Okay, so this card is not that great. It's just like a level four that can negate targeting onto your cards, but that's not that's not very good. It doesn't even destroy the card that targets whatever. So it's like, this card is kind of eh. Silent Magician Zero. Okay, they're making, like, light versions of all these. They're, like, silent, uh, like, you know. Uh, light spellcaster effect monster. You can only use the third effect once per turn. If your opponent draws cards, increase this card's level by the number drawn. And it also gains attack equal to the difference. When your opponent activates a spell card or effect and you control gold sarcophagus of light, you can negate the activation. And if you do increase... Okay, now that's a more powerful negate. That's a more powerful negate. Silent Swordsman and Magician were always light? No, I meant like because of the zero, you know, because of Coke Zero and so on and so forth. I didn't mean the attribute. Anyways. Um, it was a boomer joke. Let's move on. This is a way more powerful card. These cards are almost the same, but this one is like infinitely better, right? Because uh, negating spell cards... Negating spell cards is just in 
in infinitely better than negating targeting like if this one negated all kinds of monster effects okay this be a useful card but it's not this one this one's powerful this one is powerful the silent magician oh we got the gadgets too in here okay tree colora gadget that is that is a sick artwork uh you can only use the first and second effect uh once per turn if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a gold sarcophagus of light or a spell trap that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Okay, that's flavorful that the, the gadget card searches the card. That is nice. Uh, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can set a stronghold, the hidden fortress directly from your deck. Stronghold, the hidden fortress is not the one from back in the day, right? The one back in the day was called stronghold, the moving fortress. Is that also a new card? Is also a new card. Okay, okay, okay. So we need to check that out later. Okay, I mean, fine card. You know, on summon searches, on destruction, sets a trap from your deck. If that's a good card, then we, we might be talking. We got Mar Mashy Marshmallow. <laughs> it's just Marshmallow with his glasses. I love that. Okay. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. During your opponent's turn, if you control Gold Sarcophagus of Light, you can special summon this card from your hand. Okay, only during the opponent's turn, though. While you control Gold Sarcophagus of Light, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, your opponent monsters cannot target other monsters for attacks. If this card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon one of your other Mashy Marshmallows that is banished in your hand deck or grave and if you do inflict a thousand damage to your opponent that is an interesting effect because you wouldn't it doesn't seem super strong right off the bat right because it doesn't do anything on your turn pretty much right it's only quote i i i have even a hard time calling this a hand trap right because it doesn't it doesn't really stop your opponent from doing anything but what it does do is it basically skips your opponent's battle phase, right? It basically skips your opponent's battle phase uh, because you just summon it from your hand in defense position. Your opponent cannot target other cards uh, for attacks and this thing cannot be destroyed by battle, right? And so you just like your opponent goes battle phase, summon this thing and your opponent's battle phase basically ends, right? Um... And the funny thing is that it even works, it even works against something like Baron the Fleur, right? Because of this third effect. It's like, if this card is destroyed by card effect, you get another Mashy Marshmallow from your, from hand deck, grave, or banished. So if you like, uh, if, if your opponent has a Baron the Fleur or any other Omni Negate that destroys, you can activate the effect, they, if they negate it with Baron, it gets destroyed, and then you trigger its graveyard effect to summon another one anyways, right? So they need like two, two Omni Negates. Or two ways to destroy it. Because this is a... The third effect is once per turn. So if they have multiple ways to destroy it by card effect, they can get over it, right? You can Gandora destroy it. You can, yeah. But you're not really getting anything out of it, right? You're kind of going even, right? You're, you're not creating card advantage by destroying your own card just to have it float into another, right? That's like saying, oh, you can blow up Reborn Tangu with Gandora's effect and then, you know, you get the effect. Like, yeah, you do, but doesn't really do much you burn a thousand i guess you know but that's not really doesn't seem like it's a win condition in this deck to burn your opponent which to be fair so far uh it's kind of like a win condition mod check situation like okay some of these cards are neat funny design but like where we, how are we winning the game you know what is what is going on here uh gold sarcophagus of light continuous spell card this is probably the most important card because everything resolves around it revolves around it so let's see uh you can only this you can only use the second and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. First effect cannot be destroyed by monster effects. Okay, that's important because it has synergy with Gandora. It means Gandora will not blow up your own sarcophagus. During your main phase, you can add one card from your deck to your hand that mentions gold sarcophagus of light. Ooh, once per turn Rhoda. That is very powerful. That is a very powerful effect for a spell card. Once per turn Rhoda is something that every deck would want, like desperately. Uh, if your opponent special summons a monster from the graveyard, you can discard a spell, then target one of those monsters, send it to the graveyard. Okay, we got some random hate for graveyard strategies. Uh, I will say special summoning from the graveyard doesn't happen that much anymore. Like, I mean, some decks do it, but like a lot of the time, like you, most decks don't have to, 
right? But it's like a bonus on this, right? The most important part about this is that it's a once per turn rota. Now, once again, the problem for a deck is that a card like this only adds consistency, right? It only adds consistency to a deck. The problem is, what does this deck do consistently, right? It's like consistently puts up a spell negate. That's pretty much all I'm seeing so far. And like an annoying battle trap, but that's not going to win you the game, right? It's just like I'm not seeing the win condition so far. Silence of time, turn silence. Quick play spell. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You can target one face up monster you control, increase its level by three. And if you activated this card in response to your opponent's monster effect activation while you controlled the gold sarcophagus and a monster that mentions it, negate that effect. If your monster that mentions Gold Sarcophagus of Light Battles during damage calc, you can banish this card from your grave and the battle phase. Uh, okay. I mean... It's a powerful trap card, I want to say. Like, I mean, you can't really use this card on turn one, right? It does negate something like uh, Nibiru. Right, it it it, it wouldn't. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a cross out designator for Nibiru or Ash, theoretically. Right, like you you go normal summon the gadgets uh, to activate the effect. Your opponent ashes it. You can chain this to negate the Ash, for example. But you also need to have the gold sarcophagus on top, right? Uh, and then the second effect. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I actually might be wrong. I'm not 100% sure now, but because the second effect says during damage calculation, if my monster loses the battle, is it, it still dies, right? Like, it's not like I save my monster. I think if we already reach damage calculation, maybe my monster still dies, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. I'm not actually 100% certain that that is the case, but I believe if we reach damage calculation... I, mean, I don't know. I, I think it still dies, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, we got Ties of Friendship. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. If you control Gold Sark of Light and a monster that mentions it, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn after this card resolves. Special summon up to two level four or lower monsters with different names from your hand or deck that mention Gold Sarcophagus of Light. The spell cards... They have pretty good spell cards, I want to say. Uh, however, the monsters are this, that we're lacking in the monster department. But the spell card is this is also a pretty powerful card, right? This is like a Ties of the Brethren remake. Uh, gadget is full combo. I mean, yeah, you can go, you can go gadget, grab gold sarcophagus, gold sarcophagus at this. And then you have the requirements fulfilled to summon two other monsters from the deck, right? Pretty much. Like, one gadget does all of that. But the question is, what is all of that, right? I mean, we're going gadget into Gold Sark. Gold Sark into this. Activate this. Summon what? Right? Summon what? And do what? Like, we can summon, we can summon this. And then we have a spell negate. But... Where do we go from there? We can't really do anything because we are also locked out of our extra deck. So, I don't know what we do. Silence towards the future. Quick play spell card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Add a monster from your deck to your hand that mentions Gold Sarcophagus of Light. Then you act if you activated this card during the battle phase while you controlled Gold Sarcophagus and a monster that mentions it. Each player draws cards until they have six cards in their hand. Bro, they have custom... It's actually custom spells. Like, the, what? The, what is this, man? It's a quick play Rhoda that can, like, let both players draw until they have six? What the hell, man? I mean... I... The more I read this, the more I read these cards. Domstar, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate that. Thank you. Also, Motion Stop. Thank you for the three months. Welcome back. The more I'm looking at these cards, the happier I am that they don't really have a win condition because this consistency is insane. I mean, they have a once per turn Rota, a quick play Rota that has a bonus effect sometimes. Uh, they have a teleport for two. 
they have this thing, which is... That this one's the weakest out of the four spells, but it's still not, not a bad card by any means. It's like their own called by the grave, pretty much. So it's kind of insane. Like, I mean, any any archetype out there would pretty much die for these spell cards. Um, it's just that the monsters aren't that great, but that's maybe good that way, man. It's probably good that way, because otherwise this deck would be complete. Like, it's like, it's one thing to make a deck super consistent, but if you also make it super powerful, then we, we are talking like, actual serious top meta contender which uh you know all this consistency doesn't really have a payoff to it yet yeah this is the stronghold trap that the gadgets set from the deck continuous trap special summon discard as an effect monster level four with these effects gains a thousand attack for each card you control that is gold sarcophagus or a monster that mentions it once per turn when an opponent's monster declares an attack and you control gold sarcophagus of light you can destroy that monster uh, okay, this is not that great. The trap card isn't as custom as the spell cards are, but it's not its not a terrible card, especially if you get it for free from the gadgets, but it's not great. Um, long story short, very custom spell cards. I like the flavor of these cards. You know, me as a certified Yugi Boomer, I appreciate... You know, the remakes of old cards, old classics. These look very cool, very nostalgic, very, very nice, honestly. Almost all of these cards have a pretty, pretty nostalgic feel to me. So I, I like that they're doing it. From a competitive perspective, um, from a competitive perspective, I don't think, just looking at it as, from like, as an archetype, you know, it doesn't seem awful, but it also doesn't seem like it's a playable deck yet. Because I simply don't see what we're doing with the deck, right? We only have five main deck monsters. Uh, one of those monsters doesn't even do anything on your turn, which is the Marshmallow, right? Like, it's it, it's only it's strictly pretty much like a battle trap. A uh, battle hand trap. So, we have, basically, in order to play with on the first turn, we only have four cards. Uh, one of which is the Gandora, which only has is this effect is only really really good if um if your opponent has cards on the board like going second this card is really nice going first like you know it's like not phenomenal um and then we have the two zero monsters which are like fine especially the silent magician is fine to set up but that's like this is the only thing that has any sort of interruptive capabilities like on your opponent's turn, right? Like uh, the Silent Magician is the pr is pretty much the only payoff we have for this deck, right? So it's cool. I like it. I like the flavor of it, but I, I don't think it's competitively viable. But I don't think it has to be, you know? I don't think it has to be uh, a tier zero deck or whatever. I think it's, uh, I think it's cool. I think it's going to get some people hyped. Fans of the anime, the early seasons, and that's um, that's good good enough in my book, you know. And maybe who knows, there is more support for it eventually, and then we might actually be talking, you know. <laughs>